G'day and welcome to another video with Better Peaks. Hope this finds everyone well. Today we're going to have a look at the new uh, color options or color profile options within Adobe Camera Raw, which uh, for demonstration's sake, the process is exactly the same for Lightroom Desktop and Lightroom Classic, or at least the outcome will be exactly the same as the, I guess, engine that's uh, behind all three editing platforms is exactly the same. So you would expect that the results will be the same. What we're going to look at are the two black and white options when editing raw files, and that's adaptive black and white, which is a new option, and Adobe Monochrome which is the original version of converting your images to black and white through the raw processing and conversion process. Now we've got four images here. First one uh, I photographed on the streets of Kathmandu, Nepal. Second one was in the Everest region. Third one was in Rome and the fourth one was in Edinburgh. Now all of these images have had no edits applied to them. These are as they were straight out of camera. You can see some of them are exposed a little bit dark, some of them are exposed a little bit bright and some are exactly the same as I wanted them to be. Uh, so yeah, there'll be a good mix of images to have a look at. The beauty of the color profiles within Adobe Camera Raw is that you can select all images and make bulk adjustments at once. So if you're converting a number of images, you don't need to do it individually, which definitely saves time and improves efficiency. Now, the first one you can see, we've uh, selected all four of those images and converted them to Adobe Monochrome. Now, this is a pure conversion to black and white. It doesn't apply any adjustments or supposed corrections that are detected by Adobe. Uh, it's purely a conversion from color to black and white. And you can see that with all four of those images that they are simply black and white versions of the images that were originally straight out of camera. So there's no brightness, contrast, highlight, shadow, uh, or any other adjustments that have been made except for that conversion. Now, if we just select all four images and take them back to Adobe Color, and what we're going to do now is go to Adaptive Black and White. And you can see that the difference in the images is quite significant. My take on what Adobe is actually doing is it's trying to neutralize all of the tonal range and the tonal values within the image. So you can see that the dark areas are being brought up, the bright areas are being brought down, and the software is simply just trying to maintain detail in all areas of the image. Now, keep in mind that these new adaptive color profiles are simply a starting point. They're not a replacement, for example, an auto correction or any other type of edit that you would normally place within an image. They are intended as being the starting point, which you would then go on to make further adjustments. You can see that under the adjustments, I've got the light panel open at the moment. Nothing else has been changed, same in color. It's basically as it was shot. So that means that you can then adjust the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whatever it is that you want to adjust within that, uh, those edit parameters within your images. So it is very interesting at how different the images are. You can see with this one in particular, it's brought up much of the detail in the shadow areas and you can see that the histogram is uh, definitely showing detail in all areas. There's no clipping in the shadow or the highlight areas. We can definitely see detail in that road and we can definitely see detail in those shadow areas. This image is still quite bright, but you can see that it has brought up the shadow details and uh, maintaining all of the detail in the clouds and the snow as well. Uh, this shot of Rome, you can see that there is a lifting of the uh, shadow areas and uh, a bringing down of the highlights. Again, just to main detail, maintain detail in all of those areas. Again, it's very contrasty lighting, very bright outside. You can see that sunshine um, coming through that top window uh, but um, and it was quite dark uh, in these shadow areas but you can see it has lifted those areas while still maintaining a detail in all parts of the image except for obviously where that sun is that detail was lost originally which you can see on the right hand spike on um, the uh, histogram up on the top right there. Now let's go back to as the images were shot with Adobe Color and you can see how much deeper uh, the shadow areas are. Um, I wouldn't say that there's any loss of detail in these images. Obviously there isn't because uh, the adjustments that we previously looked at, it maintained or lifted all of the detail in those shadow areas. But certainly uh, I find the adaptive black and white really interesting. Now, um, as I said, it's not a one-click uh, edit. You know, you don't need to touch it any further. It really is a starting point. For me, I actually really liked that it was quite a dark, moody image for this one in particular. And, um, you know, as I said, it's a great starting point. Um, 
uh, while being able to continue editing your images. Now, for me personally, I'm still leaning towards the original black and white conversion um, uh, with the Adobe Monochrome. I think as long as you keep in your mind that it really is a starting point with this new adaptive color profiles, then you're going to basically be at the forefront of remembering that, uh, okay, this is the conversion to black and white. It's a starting point. I can now go through and apply the contrast and work with the highlights and the shadows and work with where my attention is within the image and what can I do uh, to maintain that attention on the part of the image that I want people to maintain their attention to. So keeping in mind that it is uh, absolutely just a starting point, I think you're going to be totally fine. Uh, but it certainly does adjust the uh, appearance of the image quite substantially when comparing it to uh, the traditional method of converting it to black and white. So look, it's I think these tools are getting better and better every time we see a new version come out. And uh, they certainly... Um, uh, finding their way into some parts of my workflow. There's uh, parts of new features or new feature sets within the Adobe suite that I'm not using. Uh, I'm still using traditional methods of editing, uh, mainly because I'm just simply finding that uh, the results I'm getting are closer to uh, what I'm hoping to achieve with my images. Having said that, it's good to be aware of the new features and the new methods of doing things and uh, rolling with them and incorporating them into your edits if they are of benefit to your edits and the final results. So look really interesting. Um, I think again that adaptive black and white I'll maybe use in some places. Uh, I'm still certainly achieving the edits and the looks that I want to with my images but um, uh, keep in mind that the traditional method of transferring or, or changing your images to black and white, uh, the initial uh, results that you'll achieve when you do that conversion is far closer to how the image originally looked versus the adaptive uh, black and white color profile, uh, which does, uh, uh, you know, see the software attempting to uh, increase detail in shadow area, maintaining detail or reducing uh, or lowering uh, the brightness of the highlight areas and giving you a more neutral image to work with uh, from a starting point. So it's very interesting and uh, I think we'll see more improvements and adjustments in the future. Let's wait and see. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, any questions are welcome and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.